Well, how's everybody doing? We, uh, we've got the Aulic trailer inside. We've got some work to do to this. We've got a tarp to put on it. Um, that's missing. We've got, a, we've got to put one of them on there. We've got some white panels coming. Um, but while we're waiting for that stuff to get here, what did show up was the fifth wheel plate. This plate goes up underneath the front there. Um, that's what it pulls from, and we've got some links that we need to take out of this conveyor chain. So, this fifth wheel plate that's on here, Jay's getting a chain loosened up here now. Um, this fifth wheel plate here, I don't know how well we can see that. Put you guys right up in here. I don't know how well you can see it. Well, that's the fifth wheel plate there, but it's all bent. It's bent up. So you'll be able to see You'll be able to see it a little better when we have it um, off in there, but um, you kind of see it's pumped up there a little bit. So I wanted to get that changed and um, get a new one on there. I worry about the damn thing unhooking, so that was like 800 bucks. So we're going to pull this off in there, tighten up the chain, and then I'm not do to get the rest of the parts for this thing until sometime next week so they shipped all the stuff together but they didn't uh, for whatever reason it got all broke up and, and it didn't end up staying together so we're gonna get underway here all right Joe's Nate knocking the last bolt out now on this fifth wheel Might have to torch that one. I don't know. What is it? Broke? Did it break? I torched it. I didn't torch it far enough. We've got this all unbolted, now we can set this old one out. And uh, yeah, go ahead, Joe, set that down. And uh, we cut part of the fenders off that ran underneath there just so that we could get at the bolts a little easier. They weren't really needed anyways. Joe's just gonna set this down. It's got a lot of old haylage and crap on top of it. I was hoping that this one was made a little different than the other one, but it doesn't look like it. it looks like they're kind of made the same, so. All right, Joe. Um, let me know what happens when I back up. Just fell down. We're good. Okay. It's all on top. We've got the uh, fifth wheel plate out from underneath the front of the trailer. We've got the old one sitting on the ground over here and then the new one is sitting there too. But I've got the old one flipped upside down and just get a kind of an idea how that's bent. It's bent right in the center. Um, and it started, started really digging in uh, right here. Um, 
on the plate so uh, I don't know how much I don't know how much longer it would have lasted looks like that one's built about the same but I'm gonna flip this one back over and uh, we'll see what the difference is if there is any in these They are, they are made a little different. Um, this one, it's kind of hard to, to see right where it's bent, but you can kind of see it in the back there. And um, this new one has got a stiffener on it um, right here, a half inch stiffener there and another one there. And this old one, does not have a stiffener in either spot so it's just kind of relying on uh, that one's cracked too so that one's cracked looks like the weld is broke now this didn't have much time left weld is broke right there Right there, I can stick my knife right down in there. So that this one's broke in a couple of spots, and uh, this one's built, you know, like I said, a little heavier. Um, I don't know what they're using. Yeah, it looks like they're using stiffeners of some kind here. That's that's a lot thicker that stuff. So yeah. What do you think? It's happening, man. Not much. Would be a good spot for this. Uh, all right, we've got this all into place. We've just got to grab some bolts to get in there. Joe's just taking a punch, putting it up through and lining everything up. So we got to grab some new bolts, get the bolts in there, and get them tightened, and that's going to do it for the fifth wheel plate. All right, we got the fifth wheel plate all bolted into place. John's just doing a little touch-up work underneath. Um, there's a, a little bit of framework underneath there that has some one-inch square tubing that bolts to the back of that fifth wheel plate. Just keeps the belt from dropping down in on your drive wheel. So right now what we're working on is I've got to take a, a link or two out of the uh, apron chain. So I've got a couple of chains hooked in the chain with some uh, ratchet binders to kind of take up the slack uh, out of the rest of the chain. We're going to knock our pins out of our master links and we're going to drop a link or two. Okay, we got the one side released. Now we're just gonna go over and do the same thing to the other side. Then we can figure out what we can get away with, whether we can get away with taking one out or two. So we just gotta kinda see how it all goes together here, or comes apart, rather. Freaking lighting is horrible here.
All right, we've got. Um, yeah, we're dealing with daylight and or the sun coming in, so we're a little screwed up here. We're gonna end up taking uh, two lengths out. Um, you can kind of see I've got one pin out of the link that's up here. Yeah, there we go. All right, we're going to take two links out. Um, I've got the punches still drove in that side. I've got to cut the, the pin out of the other side. We can drop them two links out. throw the pins back in we dropped two links out before we started we hooked our ratchet binders up on the outsides of the chain decided what we needed to take out dropped uh, two links out and then we ended up putting a ratchet binder in the center hooked to the paddles now we're gonna be able to throw the pins in rather easy uh, Gotta go nicely. So we've got the uh, the center binder in. You got a pin. I got a pin. We're gonna pin the wet. All right, we've got done as much as we could do on this trailer until I get the rest of the parts in for it. We've got the fifth wheel plate all on there, all bolted in, and we also took couple of links out of the um, apron chain which I've never done before and uh, I thought it was going to be harder than it was but we ended up hooking some binder um, straps on there kind of kept it pulled together and uh, that's ready to go that chain was tightened up as far as we could get it and uh, I couldn't tighten it anymore and we were lucky to uh, to have gotten as far along as we did uh, with it and this chain's really not got that much wear to it. And I got the, uh, I had to, in order to get two links out, I had to cut. I had to take a paddle section out, which is all right, but um, we're not wore too bad. And then the link is, is margin, it's got marginal wear to it. This is open barrel uh, chain here. It's, uh, m88 or something like that can't remember what it is actually i can look on 
package here. It's a uh, D88C uh, uh, chain. I ended up getting two new master lengths. And I didn't need them. All I needed was new pins. We put new pins in when we put the uh, chain back together. So we've got um, new white panels that I also ordered for this trailer. And I've got a new tarp to go on here. We got to do a little bit of work to the tailgate yet. And then this is going to be ready for uh, wheat. We'll use it for wheat and um, we'll use it for uh, corn silage. So um, if we weren't going to be using it for wheat, I wouldn't have to put a new tarp on it. But um, the tarp all went to hell last year. So um, I thought I was going to trade this trailer in and um, we got kind of behind the eight ball a little bit here. All this work should have been done to it. Um, but I ended up, oh Christ, I can't remember how much the parts were for this. Like 3,500 bucks or something. I, I can't remember how much I spent on that. But at any rate, we got the 4620 going. We ended up having to put, um, had an alternator that was bad on it. Uh, we ended up putting new batteries in it. A starter, a key switch. Um, I ended up having on the starter, I went to uh, get this lug off right here on the old starter and pulled the lug right off the starter solenoid. So we ended up putting a, a new one on here. And um, Jared wants to put this on the big baler. He's got the baler box up there under the canopy. And uh, he wants to put this on the big baler. And uh, he's got a freaking seven inch uh, open stack on it. So uh, we'll start this up quick and then we'll close out this video here. <sighs> Folks, that's the uh, 4620. Um, I've had this tractor for probably going on 20 years now. Um, I bought it used, obviously. Um, it come out of Ohio. It was actually a, a sister tractor to the uh, 4320 that came off the same farm. I bought them about two, three months um, from each other. Bought the 4320 first, and I ended up picking this one up ended up having a it had a year-round cab on it and um, I took the year-round cab off and uh, I got a got a set of these ROPs the other two tractors I ended up building my own ROPs for but those that there is a John Deere ROP um, with the um, canopy top on it and uh, when we built our own uh, the John Deere said roll guard on there on some of them and I ended up putting Horgan um, on, on ours the ones that we re the ones that we built but uh this is a 1971 with a synchro range uh, transmission in it um, it's been a pretty good tractor uh, I planted a lot of corn with this tractor um, we used to narrow the narrow the front end up, narrow the wheels in and the back, and uh, I had a set of spacer rings for uh, snap-on duels. The tires are a little tired on it. These tires have been on there since I had, uh, since I've had the tractor. It's got, oh what the heck's it got on it? 58, it's got 5,800 hours on it. It had 2,500 hours on it when I bought it. So, um, it's in pretty good shape, runs real well, and uh, does a good job. So that's gonna about do it for this video, folks. I wanna thank you for watching, and we'll catch you at the next one.